Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Garrett Clue. After you transitioned out of the Olympics and rowing, you ended up going into public service, into the police academy. How did you make that decision, Garrett? I wanted to do something to serve the community that I had lived in. I wasn't, you know, I didn't go to an Ivy League school. I didn't have a job at Goldman Sachs waiting for me. There wasn't people beating down my door saying, here's an opportunity for you. And I looked at that profession and said, this is an opportunity for me to do something that has a positive impact on the world and to make my community in San Diego a little bit better. And I thought, I'm young enough that if I don't like it after a few years, I'll do something else. There's nothing that binds me to this decision for the rest of my life. So I sort of gave myself that escape hatch. And I, you know, I did it for three, three plus years. And it was amazing work. I worked with some great people. And at the end of the day, I felt like I was putting on a costume every day and it wasn't me. It was a job that I enjoyed doing and it was a fascinating laboratory to study human behavior, but I couldn't project myself into the future and say in 20 years, if I had promoted from, you know, officer to sergeant, lieutenant, whatever, it didn't, I felt like a misalignment for me. And so I I made a decision, you know, I made a decision to, to go back into sport, which I needed a break from. Some of the advice that I give to students is sometimes you have to do the thing that you don't like to find the thing that you do. Mic drop. The way I describe it, I don't know if this will resonate with you, is that it helps if you adopt the mindset of a mad scientist. Because what does a mad scientist do to find the right formula? She tests, she experiments, she puts different chemicals in her test tubes and sometimes it blows up. It's not a mistake. It's part of the discovery process to find the right formula. That's probably a a more positive way to frame it. I think that you can be paralyzed into thinking that a decision that you make will be forever. And sometimes it it is that path. It's It's the wrong formula that leads you to the right formula, right? And so you need to experience certain parts of that journey in order to lead you to the on-ramp to the thing that's going to make you the happiest. Exactly. You mentioned you ended up going back into sport. I'm just going to quickly summarize so we can get into the entrepreneurial side. You moved from public service, from the San Diego police force back into the Olympic family as an employee for the U.S. Olympic Committee. You were one of two people selected for the management development program, one of two Olympians selected for that program. And you worked at the Olympic and Paralympic Games in Beijing, Vancouver, and London. And then you made a transition into the private sector. You joined, I believe, 776 Original Marketing. And you built and managed the athlete representation business unit. How did that happen? There's a a longer story. I'll try to keep it short. But the former CEO of the USOC brought me on board to help him build. And this was my first startup experience. It was a marketing startup. 
And one of the things that they wanted to do was represent some athletes. And this is going back to what we were previously talking about. Sometimes you have to do the things, <laughs> thing that you don't like to find the thing that you do. I managed an athlete as an agent and realized that this is not something that I want to do, which is sort of funny now that I work with David Falk, who, you know, basically invented the, the industry and he's done arguably very well. But it was something that I had no experience in and it was just dropped on my desk. Like, you're here, just do this. And okay, no problem. Let's figure it out. What, what, is, what is this job even do? Like, how, wh- where do I start? And I learned a ton and it was interesting, but the value to me was knowing that, okay, this is not something that I want to continue to do. And I think around that same time, you ended up getting a teaching position at the University of Colorado as an adjunct and got your MBA, which is pretty incredible. Is that right? I had convinced myself that I was going to get a working MBA that, I, you know, I was going to be one of those people that I'm going to learn through experience. And that was probably a disservice because first of all, there's no good time to go to business school. Like it just, there isn't, you, you know, there's always something going on. It's whether it's financial or with family or whatever. And I needed someone to tell me that like, you're never going to find a good time to go. So just, you know, sort of suck it up. And if you want to do it, do it now. But I was resistant to the idea. And I, I wanted to sort of be this underdog, like, oh, I'll get my MBA through life. And that was dumb. That wasn't a smart thing to do. And you know, I ended up in a really unique program that was administrated by George Washington University, switched between Columbia University and UCLA and Anderson. And it was really an amazing experience. I learned a ton. And it was, it was definitely the right decision. But going back to school at 39, was that was a serious decision for me financially and everything. But it's also where I met my now wife. So I consider it like the most expensive dating program in the world. (laughs) Yes, a positive dating experience. So I guess, was it after you graduated from GW that you then became the managing director of Star Angel Network? Is that right? I wish it was that sort of seamless. I graduated from business school and I thought, okay, I've just taken the cap off of my opportunities. Now I'm standing shoulder to shoulder with, you know, everyone else. And now I, and so I went and said, you know, I want to get a stamp on my resume. I want to get a Bank of America, UBS. I want to go into finance, Goldman. And, and I went and I had a million interviews and everyone's like, look, you're 41 years old. We can't put you with the incoming class of investment bankers. You literally will, you'll hate it. Like there's no spot for you here. It just doesn't. And I was flexible with one exception is that when someone said, we want to put you with the sports marketing group. And I said, absolutely not. I'm not interested in that. I said, I don't want to be a collectible. I said, I want to be known for, I need these skills and these capabilities that are, that are important for my own development. And I don't just want to be a collectible, like the Olympians on the shelf, we bring him down we have drinks and then we let the grownups talk about business. And I was hyper aware of that. And not sure. I might have been overly resistant to it, but it was important to me. It was important to my own development and my own sort of attitude towards my profession that I wouldn't tell people that I was an Olympian. I would just say, hey, I'm going to have an MBA and a weird past. And I would hide it. And people would find out later, oh my God, why didn't you say anything? You know, I want to be, judge me on what I'm doing now, not what I did then. And that was important to me. So how did you find your way to star where you were, I guess, beginning to do what you're doing now, which is, but specifically providing professional athletes access to early stage investment opportunities. So while I was looking for work, I sort of dove headfirst into all things entrepreneurship and startup related. And I went to in New York, you can go to three events a night. And I just gave myself an education on everything that was started. And I started talking to founders, just, Hey, what do you need help with? Let me help. I'll help for free. You want me to look at your deck? You want me to look at your, you know, your projections? Like, and after a while, I started helping a few people and they said, Hey, you're really good at this. Can we pay you? And I said, Yes, you can pay me. And then somebody else did and somebody else did. And all of a sudden, I had this bespoke like consulting. And it came from just me doing the thing that came easy to me and wanting to help first and not ask, but help. And I think that's an important message without, I wasn't looking for professional, I wasn't looking for revenue. I was just, hey, let me help you because I know that this will help me. You were leading with curiosity. And it really worked out well. And that led me, and I was, I was a member of the Star Angel Network. 
because I had been working with startups and I built this huge network in New York and I built a reputation for myself, they said, Hey, you should come on and be the managing director of this. And it's a bunch of athletes that were investing together. And I was screening the deals. We were doing different things. And that was definitely a, a fundamental stepping stone to where I am now. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of t for c And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time the number four coffee.org or text me at 202 236 5712. That's 202 236 5712.